Elon Musk released more internal Twitter files on Tuesday, showing that under previous leadership, when the company was run by Prague Agarwal and Jack Dorsey, they allowed the Pentagon to run psychological operations or psyops on the platform by opening and managing a bunch of fake sock puppet accounts that ordinarily would get detected and banned, but they were whitelisted or allowed to break the rules. Specifically, it was CENTCOM, the United States Central Command, which is a division of the Department of Defense, who were using the sock puppet accounts to shape public opinion about the United States activities in Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Kuwait, and elsewhere. Now, the Twitter files didn't mention the name of the secret program because Twitter might not have even known, so I'll just tell you, it's Operation Earnest Voice, and it's been happening for over a decade. Now, where have I heard that before? Oh, that's right, from my YouTube channel and in my books, like page 193, of the Liberal Media Industrial Complex, which came out three years ago, detailing that this was happening. Order it in paperback from Amazon.com and you might be able to still get it before Christmas. The new Twitter files also reveal that the FBI paid Twitter almost three and a half million dollars in administrative fees for the time that employees spent working with the FBI to censor content like the Hunter Biden laptop story just before the 2020 presidential election. Speaking of CENTCOM, Operation Earnest Voice, and accounts on social media designed to spread military industrial complex propaganda, it sure would be interesting to find out the true story about that seven-year-old girl in Syria who just supposedly decided to start a Twitter account and then mysteriously got a verification blue check mark and started tweeting out photos of the war-torn country, hoping to gain support so that the United States would intervene. I'm sure that had nothing to do with the CIA, the State Department, or some other government entity running psyops on the American people. She was also invited to the Oscars a few years ago to help raise awareness for her cause. Surprisingly, a real reporter was in the White House press corps and asked Corrine Jean-Pierre, old Joe's new chief propagandist, about the FBI working with Twitter to censor facts. But of course, she didn't want to talk about it. Um, the latest Twitter files showed that the intelligence community was actively involved in discrediting the Hunter Biden laptop story. Does it bother the president and those at the White House that a government agency like the FBI was involved in suppressing a legitimate news story. Again, yeah, I'm just going to refer you to the FBI. I'm not going to comment from here about that. Elon Musk then called out pencil neck Adam Schiff, asking him, as outgoing chair of the House Intelligence Committee, did you approve hidden state censorship in direct violation of the Constitution of the United States, Rep. Adam Schiff? Schiff for brains then responded with this truly Orwellian and contradictory nonsense, saying, I don't support censorship or hate speech. As the outgoing CEO of Twitter, how about you? Why not do more to stop slurs against black people, LGBTQ plus people, Jewish people, and others? So in the same breath, he says that he doesn't support censorship, but demands that Elon Musk censor more content that hurts certain people's feelings. Well, Mr. Schiff, once the Republicans take over the committees in January, they're going to have subpoena power and, well, you're going to have some explaining to do. Of course, the people like Adam Schiff wishing someone a Merry Christmas who happens to be Jewish is considered to be anti-Semitism. <laughs> That's not a joke, by the way. Stay tuned for my War on Christmas 2022 edition, which I'll post either on Friday or later this weekend. Some other hilarious things happened over the last week regarding Twitter. And again, even if you don't use Twitter, which I don't blame you, I haven't even tweeted for six months, it still is hilarious to see the liberal media lunatics completely melt down over what Elon is doing over there. He suspended several self-proclaimed journalists, including ones from CNN, the New York Times, and the Washington Post, for doxing the location of his private jet, which he specifically said was a violation of the terms of service because it obviously puts his safety in harm's way. Their accounts were entirely deleted, including all of their tweets. So it wasn't like a usual suspension where just the supposed tweets that violate the policy were taken down. Everything was taken down. Then he said it was only a seven day suspension and then he changed his mind again and within 48 hours, he restored all of their accounts anyway because Elon Musk is anything but consistent or principled in the decisions that he's making regarding content policy. Taylor Lorenz almost cried again, <laughs> losing the most important thing in her entire life, her Twitter account. She's that psychotic woman who works for the Washington Post who doxed the woman who runs the libs of TikTok Twitter account, literally just linking to her home address, showing up at her family's home and trying to get the account banned only to 
getting so much publicity that it has more than doubled in Twitter followers. But sadly, Taylor Lorenz's Twitter account has also been restored. <laughs> WTF, Elon. Sometimes it's good to give liberals a taste of their own medicine because that might actually convince them to back off. Elon also announced a new policy banning people from posting links to other social media platforms, even to their own accounts on Facebook, Truth Social, Instagram, pretty much all of the Twitter competitors. The new policy even forbid people from telling their followers on Twitter to follow them on Facebook or Instagram or any other platform. Of course, the Elon Musk fanboys defended his ridiculous decision, saying things like, well, would Fox News allow CNN to advertise on their network? Totally different. That's a publisher. This is supposed to be a platform. And Elon said that he bought it because he is a free speech absolutist, and that would include posting links to your profiles on any other part of the internet. Then he posted a poll asking if he should step down as the CEO of Twitter, and the final results were in favor of him stepping down. Unclear at this point if any Operation Earnest Voice bots were involved in that poll, and then he said that he will step down if or when he could find a new replacement CEO, which he said, at this point, nobody wants the job. Then he flip-flopped again and deleted the tweets about the new ridiculous policy. You see, when Elon does something good, I'm gonna congratulate him for it. Like when he unbanned Donald Trump, Roger Stone, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Laura Loomer, and thousands of other accounts. And when he does something stupid, like issuing a new policy, forbidding people from mentioning they're on a competitor platform, or suggesting plugging in a neural interface into your brain, thinking that he and human beings are going to become transhumanist, immortal, all-knowing, cybernetic gods, I'm going to call him out for that. That wasn't a joke, by the way. That really is his plan for his company, Neuralink. Go watch my video on transhumanism if you missed it. While the internal files from Twitter are neat, many are wondering about Facebook files and YouTube files. But remember, whistleblowers have already leaked information from Facebook showing that they were manually curating the top trending list, which we already knew. But it was good to have confirmation that they were censoring certain topics and manually inserting topics to try to make people think they were popular. And also, let's not forget about Zach Voorhees, a YouTube employee who leaked some internal documents from them. Those documents also confirm that YouTube is manipulating the search results to favor mainstream content and has a whole long list of shadow banned topics. And with Republicans taking over the majority in the House of Representatives, thanks to the outcome of the 2022 midterms, which yes, were disappointing, but at least we got that, we will have subpoena power at the committee level and we'll be able to bring in people like Mark Zuckerberg and Susan Wojcicki, the CEO of YouTube, who has never been brought in for questioning, by the way, and answer some questions. In other news, I did see a few morons comment in yesterday's video claiming that I sold out because I promoted certain products that I've literally been using for years, <laughs> which I will leave links to in the description below of this video as well. Even the Ergotron, I own this very model, which is why I recommend it. And this isn't my kitchen, but this is a promotional video that the company put out. And I just wanted to show people that this is basically how I use it. And yes, it is powered by a laptop. You can use an external monitor and a keyboard and a mouse with a laptop, which is much better for your posture and your ergonomics. I've been using it since 2015. And the only thing with this model is when it's extended up in the standing position, when you're typing, the monitor does jiggle just a little bit which can be a little bit weird. I noticed it at first, but now I don't notice it at all. So there's this other model, which doesn't have that issue. I tried this one out too, but I sent it back. But uh, the links are in the description below and I would highly recommend either of them. Also, if you're not using an ergonomic keyboard, you're putting yourself at risk of getting carpal tunnel or tendonitis or a vertical mouse, an ergonomic mouse, of course. Those also linked in the description below. And this is not a paid endorsement. These are Amazon affiliate links that's noted in the description below. So if you do buy them, I will get a tiny commission. But again, I could recommend any product that I literally wanted to. And these are ones that I personally use. And you might even be able to get them in time for Christmas if you order them today. If not, you should still get them for yourself because your computer is actually literally killing you. So click the links in the description below and head on over to amazon.com and check them out. <laughs>